if you can do that, the actual process of blood work, it becomes a lot easier. Uh, at least from my personal experience, that's what I've noticed. Hello, beautiful humans. Today I'm going to be taking you along with me. I am first going to go get my hair cut because look at how long this is. <laughs> this is crazy. But then I'm going to have some blood drawn. Um, I'm actually participating in a medical research program. So um, like the whole reason that I'm doing this and that I'm here speaking to you today is so that uh, I can share my story and make others more aware of uh, endometriosis and hopefully encourage others who might be struggling with endo as well, encourage and inspire them on their healing journey. That's like my purpose and why I'm here. I, I, I've i learned a lot implementing spirituality into my health and my business. So um, that's another huge thing that I'm here and, and a part of. But um, I got a phone call randomly one day uh, from a medical research program based on the blood work that I had done at a Henry Ford facility here in Michigan. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to be a part of their medical research program. And I honestly, I couldn't say no because I, I think I've said it on here before is that I have a few different things I've been diagnosed with. I have a genetic mutation called MTHFR and I have the thyroid antibodies for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disorder, but I don't have like my thyroid hormones read totally fine. And then I am undergoing all of this stuff with endometriosis, which is also a kind of, I wouldn't necessarily call it like an exploratory thing, uh, but it's something that there's not a whole lot of information on yet and it's still very much in the research phases so when i heard and and was asked to be a part of this research program i thought it was an absolute no-brainer and that this was spirit giving me a call to connect me with the right um people and and that just that there's something here so um i just feel like if they can take information from me and my body and my health concerns and my health history and put research together for, you know, not only myself, but other people who, you know, it may be years down the line, even after I've even passed away, you know, uh, hopefully a very old age, but it just gives them information to be able to research and explore uh, more things about it. So I, I have absolutely no problem being a part of that. And I'm actually honored um, to be able to to do this kind of work in my lifetime. I think it's important and uh, just given like my family history, I lost my grandma really young uh, for multiple sclerosis, MS. And if we would have even had the information that we do now about MS, um, she might have been able to have had treatment that just didn't exist then, do you know what I mean? So I wholeheartedly believe in and being able to encourage that research and um and make healing just so much easier for anyone else in the future so i'm super excited to be a part of this i'm going to take you along my journey and um i'm going to give you a couple of tips on how i've been working through my fear of having blood work done so come along uh first we're gonna get my hair cut though so let's let's do this okay i'm obsessed with my hair i will have to show you from the like I'll have to show you the full video um, when I get home. But my hair looks so good, I'm so excited! Both my hair appointment and my doctor's appointment are in the same city, so I'm passing a little bit of time here before my appointment. I'm gonna go check out the Spirit of Detroit, see how he's been doing. Um, it's been a minute. I, I used to come down here and meditate uh, in front of the Spirit every week. Um, and then especially like every morning when I would I used to work right here, right downtown. Uh, I used to walk by the spirit, say my good mornings and say my little blessing to the spirit. But it's been a minute since I've been here, so I'm excited to see him, um, see how his energy is doing. If you're not from Detroit, the spirit of Detroit is a sculpture that we have here in the city. And he represents um, not only the people of Detroit, but he represents um, this symbol of the connection between humans and divinity. Um, and so it's kind of a sacred monument here in Detroit that we really take pride in and like I said He's a symbol for our people. He's a symbol for our city and actually as of 2005 It's now part of our city ordinance. He gets his annual maintenance so they maintain the green patina paints and the gold on the gold part portions of the sculpture every single year 
and we, that actually comes out of the Detroit City Tax Fund. And so I actually put an organization together called Spirited Detroit, and our main goal is to offset the cost of that annual maintenance. So um, a portion of all of our proceeds do go and benefit the maintenance of the Spirit of Detroit. So if that interests you, check us out at spiriteddetroit.com uh, for more information. But I'm gonna take you, I'll show you a little bit around the city, I'll show you the spirits, and then we'll head to my doctor's appointment here in about 40 minutes. It's a gorgeous day. It's super windy though, so that kind of ruined my hair. <laughs> um, so it's very nice. I'm gonna go sit down. Um, there's a little park over here. I'm just gonna sit down and, and catch up on email correspondence here for a minute before I have to head out to my appointment. I just left the hospital. Wow, that was the easiest blood work I've ever done, and they took more vials than I've had in a really long time. So. I've been doing a ton of inner work with like needles and medical stuff recently um, in preparation for the surgery. And that's why, you know, <laughs> that's why I felt like doing this um, research thing today and giving blood would only help me face that fear of, you know, overcoming needles and medical stuff and all that weird stuff that used to make me super squeamish. Like, uh, it really is. Uh, a big part of it all is mindset and that's something that I've really been doing a lot of work with so not only have I been meditating with this um, and just trying to like ease and calm my mind but even had this like kind of realization recently that <laughs> I turned 25 this year and I almost like snapped into this like thought like I'm a fully grown adult <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need to be afraid of needles anymore. Like getting my blood drawn isn't gonna kill me. It's uncomfortable, that's it. Like I feel like that's the big thing is my mind for a long time was mistaking like discomfort with like the end all be all life altering things. <laughs> and that's just straight up not the case. Like I will get through this, uh, I will heal and I have learned that being fully transparent with medical professionals beforehand, it's it only helps you. So even though I know I'm not gonna pass out at giving blood or like doing any kind of blood work, um, I always forewarn my people like, hey, I'm a little bit squeamish. I'm kind of the girl who needs to lay back and kick their feet back and um, take it easy for a couple minutes after if I get up too fast. Yeah, I just get a little lightheaded and dizzy. So this was my easiest experience here. So I'm just gonna walk you through the appointment. I got here, I got in, I checked into the hospital. Um, I haven't been into a hospital during the COVID time, but um, our hospital here has like reception booths almost to check in and just confirm that you haven't had any COVID symptoms. And then um, they directed me to the clinic down the hall. Uh, so I walked in there, I checked in with them. Um, they took me back. They got my, my weight, my height, my general info, they took measurements of my waist and my hips. Uh, they measured my blood pressure three times, um, just kind of a few seconds, a few minutes in between. Uh, and then they took blood work and then they did a urine sample. So actually before she came in to do my blood pressure and the blood work, she let me sit in the room for about five minutes just to relax and, and calm down. I don't know, I guess technically that would be like standard procedure anywhere you go really I think that they leave the room but I don't think that they formally like tell you hey I'm leaving the room so you can relax before we do this while I'm waiting for blood work um, that's typically when I feel the most nerves about what's going to happen and when I feel the most nervous about blood work and all that good stuff so um, before my doctors come in and before I do any kind of blood work I incorporate my meditation practice into it so um, if you're familiar with box breathing uh, or the 444 breath, either way, it's it's commonly referred to either of these. This is when you inhale for four seconds, hold the breath for four seconds, and exhale for four seconds. And this even pattern of breathing, it helps naturally calm your nervous system down after you get into the breath pattern. So um, I 
always do box breathing before I do any kind of blood work just to relax my body, relax my mind, get myself into the most relaxed and, and comfortable state possible. And then um, while I am, because sometimes, you know, holding the breath while you're having a, like blood drawn and having a needle in your arm isn't the best for you. So that's when, when the needle's actually in my arm, I transition into a, like a, I guess you could call it even inhales and exhales without holding it. So inhaling for four seconds and exhaling for four seconds. So when the needle's in my arm, I will inhale through the nose and exhale out of the mouth because when you exhale, do that. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose and then inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. When you exhale through the nose, you don't get as much air out as when you exhale through the mouth. So I try to inhale for four seconds through the nose and exhale for four seconds out of the mouth to be able to take that full and complete breath in the four seconds that I'm allowing to do that because then it lets all of the air in my body exit the body so I can bring in a new batch of fresh, clean air and um, being able to focus on the breath. If you can do that and focus on your breathing, then the, the actual process of blood work, it becomes a lot easier. Uh, at least from my personal experience, that's what I've noticed. Also, it's been helpful for me in the past. Like I know when I was a kid, I used to put a headphone in and just play music out of the ear that they were drawing the blood from. This time they, I put my feet up, they kind of kicked me back a little bit and I just stayed flat for a couple minutes after. I got a little pale, a little sweaty. Then they gave me some juice and some water and I just sat there for a couple minutes and I was totally fine. Like I felt totally fine. I got up normal and nothing, nothing bad happened this time. Yeah, I, I would say that I wasn't even as fearful going into it this time. And I usually am like hyper aware of the bandage on my arm after the fact. Like I don't, you know, moving my arm and, and like bending this arm crease would usually freak me out after doing any kind of blood work. And I'm not really feeling that right now. I left there kind of feeling almost as good as I did when I came in. So that feels really good. I know it's a big mindset thing to overcome, but just trust me, if you can go into it and, and face your fear, that's the only way to overcome challenging situations. Because if you just continue to put things off and put things off and put things off, and trust me, I've been there, I've done that. I've avoided blood work on so many different occasions and that's, it's only put me back into that space of fear because I wasn't allowing myself to overcome that. And I was feeding that fear-based mentality. So yeah, don't let fear run your life. Don't let fear take the driver's seat. You rightfully own your space in the driver's seat. And um, I am so glad that I did this. I honestly wasn't even, I forgot all about the, the gift part of it, but they gave me a $50 gift card leaving here. So I went into this because medical research is, is super important to me. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, losing my grandma super young to MS and having a few different things that I've been diagnosed with that are still in the research phases. Um, being a part of this research program is incredibly important to me and my health. And so what they're doing is they're studying DNA and they're studying illnesses and seeing if environmental factors play a certain role in that. And you know, they're gonna pull information that they might not even know yet because this is a at least a 10 year long program. So it's just, they're going to, they're taking information and data from people all over the population to gain information about them and their health and then uh, it just it gives them more information to put into a database and explore and research dif different diseases, illnesses, different environmental factors um, and, and health causes. So I think that's incredibly important. I think it is amazing that this was even a thing. Um, like I got a random phone call one day when I was at work uh, inviting me to join the program because I have used a Henry Ford uh, facility in the past. So I'm just overall, I'm extremely grateful that I was able to participate in this community program. I'm excited to see the results that come out of this. Um, there's no guarantee it could take a couple weeks, it could take a few years. There's no guarantee when I will get DNA results back. But when I do, you better believe that I will be making a video and posting all about that. So stay tuned if this is something that you are interested in being a part of. I'm not a, uh, I'm not an ambassador for this. I don't get paid any extra money for referring anybody else. Um, but the program is called All of Us Research Program. Uh, this might be backwards, but 
if you go to joinallofus.org, um, you can get all the information on who they are as an organization, what they're all about, and how you can get started and get involved in your community. So this was amazing. I feel great. I hope that these little blood drawing tips helped you. If you have any tips, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Um, if you are interested in knowing more about the research program, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. And just again, I thank you so much for being a part of my journey, a part of my community, uh, for listening to my story and just being here along the ride. Your support means more to me than I can ever explain. So the light in me honors the light in each of you. Again, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps other people in similar situations uh, find this kind of content and hopefully it helps them to, along their journey as well. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. I will see you next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to show your support. I'll be back next week with more videos. I love you guys.